What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for another replay analysis here today for our boy Bream. We posted on this Reddit that we're uh, we are heavily involved in called Rocket League School, where there's a lot of great content for people who are trying to improve and a lot of people who like to help people improve and they have questions on their gameplay. Check it out if you want to. Um, but he's from the Reddit and I uh, put out a post saying that I was doing free replay analysis. I do my replay analysis for free um, kind of often right now since I am a small channel, but they are set up to, for the most part, be only for people who are subscribers on Twitch. Uh, if you subscribe on Twitch, you get a free replay, replay analysis every single week. Uh, or you can redeem them redeem them with 3,000 channel points. My goal is to keep these under 25 minutes now. I had a history of making like 40 minute long replay analysis. We did pretty good on our last one. See if we can do good again here. And let's let's get into it so this doesn't run longer than it needs to. 2v2 this time instead of 3v3. I think this is my first, mm, not my first, but one of the few 2v2 replay analysis on the channel. And I believe this is solo queue. This is solo queue. And he is champ three, which I like because that's a pretty high rank. And we should be able to get some, or not we should be able to get some, but I like analyzing slightly higher level gameplay. Just because you can start to pick out some higher level mistakes rather than just telling people constantly pick up pads which you still need to tell some champ threes, pick up pads or rotate better or rotate at all. You know what I mean? Just some higher level of thinking as you rank up higher and higher, which is always fun to educate people on, in my opinion. All right, let's go back a little bit more. Talking a lot, getting distracted. Here you're pushing up a bit close. Again, we're being a little nitpicky, but because you see uh, your teammates getting challenged and Senpai, I mean, could potentially win this challenge pretty hard. You're pretty close for any possible outcome here. And that could be kind of dangerous. In my, if this was me in your position, I would have picked up that pad like you do. And then I would have swing out to the right a little bit. Pick up this pad. And I probably would have uh, waited here to see the outcome of the 50 before pushing up so close. That was kind of a hard 50-50 to read on what was gonna happen and you were kind of pushed up a little close for my liking. So make sure when your teammate's taking a 50, you're not pushed up so close to where if he gets beat, you're kind of both boned a little bit. So be careful with your 50-50 your positioning. Not your 50-50 positioning, but your positioning or your teammates 50-50. Uh-oh. Didn't expect the pass from your teammate. Twos, um, it's good to infield pass sometimes. Don't overdo it though, infield passes are very dangerous in 2v2 because typically with an infield pass, you're gonna be flying forward after you make the pass to some extent, diagonally forward. And then also if you get beat because you're going for the ball that he just passed you, he's his momentum is pushing him forward. Your momentum is either dead set like this or you'll be flipping forward. So if your opponent beats you on infield pass, you're both you both have momentum going forward or you have no momentum coming back and you're putting yourself in a in a prime opportunity to get scored on so unfortunately you didn't expect the infield pass and you got scored on it for you got scored on for it i'm not saying never infield pass in 2v2 but that is something i would probably not start whipping out until i have a goal lead or so if you and your teammate want to start doing some infield passes, could be a good way to extend your lead. But right off the bat, early in a game, probably not a good idea to be looking for infield passes. Okay, here, bad rotation by you because the ball is flying over your head, going to your corner, and your teammates coming into position to pick up that ball. 
so that he can push it back the other way, right? He's trying to get control of this ball and you going back into your corner, especially for a boost that isn't there, even if the boost was there, you shouldn't be going this way. Because all you're doing by putting yourself back in this position, right where the ball is about to land, is just getting your teammates way. Say he wants this ball to come and land here so he can catch it and push it back up over the wall, or just catch it on his hood and flick the first uh, attacker. He can't do that because you're flipping right into the path of the ball. So instead, you need to be rotating out this way, picking up these pads as you come back to defense so you have a little bit of boost, and waiting to see where the play goes from there. But you, uh, something maybe to keep in mind, I don't know if you've heard this saying before, I use it a lot, rotate away from the ball. So if the ball is uh, moving down your left side of the field as you're rotating back, you wanna be rotating down the right side of the field or you wanna be moving towards the right side of the field. You never wanna be rotating straight at or straight underneath the ball, unless obviously maybe if you're the last man back and you're trying to catch the ball, but here it was your teammate's ball and all you're doing by pushing this direction is cutting him off. That's a mistake a lot of people make, uh, especially in 3v3. Don't see that mistake as often in 2v2, but hey, you did it here, so we're pointing it out. Could be a goal. I think you slotted it. Nice. Good job hitting that open net. Good cheat. Beautifully done. Going for the pass. Not bad. Execution could be better. I don't like to point out a lot of um, mechanical mistakes, but this is something I might be able to just point out really quickly. Obviously, you were looking for where your teammate was. And so that might have been the reason why you accidentally drove past the ball. But I don't know, maybe you go for your passes like this all the time, but ideally you probably just want to uh, come to the ball's level, maybe slightly above the ball, maybe slightly below the ball, depending on how exactly you want to pass it. And then just do a diagonal flip out this way in order to pass the ball. A bit more power will come behind the pass, get it down to your teammate quicker, less of a chance of it getting intercepted by your opponents, and generally probably will give you a faster recovery coming out because you'll be putting faster momentum towards the ground and towards rotating out. So pass could have been executed better, but otherwise really well done. Okay, you get bumped. I like that you see your teammates challenging with you and you decide to just kind of fake challenge and turn. Uh, I don't think you really should have pushed up for the ball in the first place after you got bumped. You're kind of perfectly positioned after you land to just kind of go back and shadow defend and let your teammate push up. So I, I definitely believe this was your teammate's ball to go for and you shouldn't have gone. You shouldn't have pushed up at all to begin with. But at the very least, I'm glad you didn't double commit with him. And when you saw he was going, you turned back away. So. At least you had that positive part of that. But because you were supposed to push that and then you got bumped off of it, that pretty much signals, okay, it, it's most likely your teammates time to go. You land perfectly to shadow defend anyways. So worked out pretty well if you would have just uh, waited. And obviously not the best touch here. You're trying to clear it safely, try to get Senpai off the ball, but you put it off your corner and it it's going to bounce straight back out in the middle. If the opponent was still lingering around, that could be a shot on your net. So you really never, you want to make sure, you know, unless you are confident that your teammate has next touch or you're in community, you know, you're in comms with your teammate, you want to make sure you're minimizing accidentally passing to your opponents off of the sidewalls and off of your own corner. I remember that happened a lot at around this rank, you know, champ at the champ ranks, champ one, champ two, champ three teammates will always accidentally pass the ball off of the sidewall straight to your opponent off the corner straight to your opponent even at my rank in gc2 sometimes happens accidentally still but you want to try to make sure in this position try to get a soft touch with your wheels so that the, the ball kills downwards 
and you can follow it up or your teammate can follow it up or try to just take a better angle on it so you can hit it hopefully up the curve you know what i mean but that was just not a good touch could have been a really dangerous touch make sure you're not accidentally passing it to your opponents off your corner and sidewall nice okay sorry i had to send a text message real quick oof oh it's a really good opportunity to score because you see reaper being super aggressive here and i mean obviously in the moment it's kind of hard to notice these things sometimes but b i mean for me like yes i know in the moment it can be hard to tell to see these openings but i think this was one of the easier openings to see if uh if you didn't miss this opening that reaper was challenging you like from pretty far back and just head on challenging you you could have hit this around him probably either to the left or the right either one probably would have worked off of the left sidewall or down the right side towards your teammate or you know i probably would have taken the left side because then the ball can bounce off the left wall you can follow it and then score the open net but yeah this he's pushing this super aggressively super quickly and this was a super easy beat if you didn't just punt it straight into him so try to be more aware of what's going on definitely a huge part of broccoli League and getting better is just not going into autopilot and staying aware of what's actually happening that's why a lot of people have problems i mean quick side note has nothing to do with i mean not has nothing to do with this exact scenario but that's why a lot of people including myself for the longest time had or have problems playing 1v1s or find 1v1s so hard to play because they're so used to assuming what's going to happen uh that you just you kind of are in autopilot and using your past experience to just assume this is going to happen assume this is going to happen assume this is going to happen and then as soon as somebody does doesn't do what you're assuming they're going to do you don't take advantage of the possible opening and sometimes you'll get countered or scored on because you didn't think somebody was going to do something and in 1v1s that's that's just how you win 1v1s you just do exactly what they don't think you're gonna do <laughs> all right let me back it up decent try decent try at a higher rank you got to be a bit more careful on this fake challenge because he can definitely beat you to this ball if he if he doesn't turn away for whatever reason he decides to turn away here or maybe he just misses his touch but at higher rank you could have gotten beat to that and you have like no boost so if you get beat to the ball fake challenging with no boost they're just gonna blow it past you and probably score so be careful fake challenging when you're kind of the uh, first man or last man, I guess, in this situation. Like your teammate's not back on defense yet. You have no boost. So if you fake challenge and he actually goes, that's pretty much a free goal. So be careful for that. And then again, kind of a good try on the pass. Kind of, you seem like you maybe are a, a threes main. You might not be, but this is a very threes kind of pass to go for. But Senpai is totally reading you on this pass. He's kind of in position for it, so kind of risky to go for that. Maybe take the safer play here and just see what else you could have done. Just shadow the ball for maybe one more bounce. Take a, take a strong 50-50 if you have to. Catch the ball in your hood and flick it maybe if they give you the space. That wasn't the best option though to take there. And I don't think you guys are teamed up. You guys aren't partied up. I really, uh, I don't like cheating up to a certain side of the field. I think you should cheat straight up the field because it gives you the best 
chance of reacting to whatever happens. Your only time you're going to have like the best chance of winning this cheat up is if the ball perfectly comes to you on the left side. But if the ball goes anywhere else, the other cheater's going to beat you to it. So really, uh, unless you're in comms with this person and they're telling you they're going to force it to the left, I don't think you should be cheating up to any particular side of the field. Cheat straight up the field because that will give you the best chance to get the ball after the cheat. What? That was quite the own goal. Doing pretty good on time so far. Let's go back one more time. What was that? Was that your kickoff? Yeah. So I like the idea of the speed recovery. And I guess, yeah, uh, never mind, never mind. If you would have gone for that mid boost, that guy would have took it from you. So you're good not going for the mid boost gonna say you should have but i didn't see that their guy was uh clearly there for it are you just driving this in it's shite it's shite nice job sunny you gotta work on uh kickoff a little bit i feel like your kickoffs have not been the strongest this game If the, the ball is consistently flying over you after the on the kickoff, that means you're just uh, landing too close on your initial flip towards the ball, and you're not giving yourself any space to actually flip up towards the, the middle of the ball with your second flip. If that's happening, that just means you need to flip earlier on your first flip towards the ball. If that's something that you consistently find is happening, make sure you're flipping earlier on your first flip, and then really make sure you're paying attention and trying to hit the center of the ball with your second flip. You're just too low, too low on the ball when you make contact on it, if it's constantly flying over your head. Ooh, again, spotting the openings right here. You dodge that demo and then bam, Reaper's pushing up really aggressively. If you just side flip into that, diagonal flip into that, you're beating him and you're going to put Gary in a good position to either 1v1 Reap or Sensei, Sen Senpai on his way back to the net, or he might just even be able to shoot this and score it. So again, keep your eyes peeled for those openings that your opponents give you. So Reaper's been really aggressive this game so far on his challenges. Or I wouldn't even say aggressive, just kind of stupid with his challenges. Challenging in, in times where he's just opening up a window for you to get it past him. Try to be more aware of when your opponents are out of position and you have that opening. Again, those infield passes are super dangerous in 2v2. Yeah, I wouldn't go for this pass here because one, it's lobbing, giving your opponents plenty of time to react to it and go meet it in the air. And two, your teammate's car is also lobbing. Like he it is obviously not getting back quickly after this pass. You're going to have to buy a lot of time for him to get back. So if you, again, get beat in this position off of this pass, there's not going to be anybody back to defend. So... I have been saying a lot lately in my replay analysis, pick your challenges well, pick the shots you go for well, pick things that you commit for well. If it's not worth going for, don't go for it. There's, And if you have teammates who are spamming you with take the shot with go for it, but you know in your mind that that's not a good ball to go for, don't go for it. And if they're tilting you by doing that shit, mute them, turn off chat. So many people, even at GC2, will tell me, will spam me, take the shot, go for it when I'm not going to put myself out of position to go for something that I'm going to get beat to unless I'm just trying to force a uh, you know force a challenge to make them play the ball that's different but if it's something like this where if I get beat and we're just getting scored on don't go for it
Yeah, honestly, I didn't think I thought you were gonna get away with this one. I didn't think you would get scored on because Gary got back before um, there was a a threat, but he went for the bump and jumped into it for whatever reason, and that kept him from being able to uh, get the save. So it, it, that goes back still to going for a dangerous ball to go for. Wasn't worth it. While your teammate made a mistake, there's always something you can do better to avoid the mistake in the first place. Yeah, I would have turned for this ball because you've got everyone beat. Again, kind of not. You got to keep them eyes open, man. Keep them senses sharp. Stay aware in the game. Sensei's got, or Senpai seems like he's got no momentum. He's got no boost. His other teammate pretty far back, not even like on your screen for most of that entire play. You got plenty of time uh, to turn on this ball at this point, and you could have beat both of them to the ball and still you know kept your offensive pressure pretty decent back pass from gary actually really good back pass kept uh possession in your favor but you could have been on offense already if you again would have just been more aware of what was going on and made the decision to uh to play that back up field so here you're positioning for a pass, which is decent. I mean, it's smart, but you could also go for the demo here, especially since time's running down. Reaper just went, he's flopping. He landed, lands in your net. Gary's kind of got a free dribble going the other way. If you go for the demo here, you're going to put the defender in a really bad spot and Gary might just be able to dribble this in or shoot this in. We'll never know because you didn't go for it. Um, but at the very least, you shouldn't be flicking off your, your ball cam here because if he does put this pass towards you, you're not going to have any idea because you flicked off your ball cam to go for the boost, unfortunately. Say he's flicking this towards you right now, bam, like you're missing it because your ball cam wasn't on. Or maybe you see that he's messing up his flick if you do keep your eyes on him and you could uh, challenge this ball, possibly take a 50-50. You never know, something good could have came out of it. So, you know. Didn't really need to turn off your ball cam to go for that boost. Kind of unfortunate. Bad decision making in the moment there. Still a chance. Keeping it up. Good try. Yeah, so uh, main takeaways. I don't really remember what I pointed out, so I don't think there was any like repetitive mistakes. Oh, you know, the one repetitive mistake, probably the one big takeaway I'm going to give you for this video. I don't remember everything I pointed out. I'm sure you do. Or if you don't, it's a YouTube video. You can go back and, and check it out. Biggest mistake, just staying more aware. Don't be an autopilot. Don't kind of, it's really easy to just kind of zone out while playing Rocket League. You got to, if you want to improve, you got to try to stay as conscious as possible while playing. Because there was a lot of openings that you missed and a lot of, uh, a lot of things you missed just because you weren't really, it seemed like you weren't paying full attention. So try to be more aware of what's going on at all times. Other than that, you look like you got a good foundation to uh, rank up, man. Good luck in the future. And you can always submit another replay analysis in the future after you've taken some of this advice and applied it to your own games. I'd love to see you back for another replay analysis, bro. And if anyone else wants a replay analysis, make sure to come to my Discord. Uh, I have a a chat i think you call it in the discord called replay analysis you can submit your replay files there and whenever i feel like doing them for free i will do them and otherwise you can subscribe to my twitch channel get a free replay analysis every single week or redeem them with 3000 channel points on the twitch channel and if you do that i will get to your replay analysis first before everyone else so yeah Hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.